Many people and spectators across various entertainment mediums have coined the term and spread the phrase, vote with your wallet. Voting with your wallet is the implication of determining your stance on something based around whether you purchase that thing or a thing related to a specific topic. It's basically the practice of spending your money in ways that's consistent with your personal values and beliefs. If there's a game or a part of a specific game you find lackluster or flawed, you could simply vote with your wallet and not buy it. A company's outed practicing terrible working environments, crunch, overwork, underpay, sexual assault, etc., then simply vote with your wallet to send them the message. This is a term used in multiple scenarios and connotations. I've had a little bit of a talk about this on Twitter a couple days ago, saying what the title and thumbnail suggest, so I'm just gonna rip the band-aid off and hit you with some cold turkey. Voting with your wallet does absolutely nothing. Or at least it does absolutely nothing over 99% of the time, and the very least is something I personally feel does hardly anything. I feel like this is a discussion worth having, and an argument worth challenging, because I very much find little reason to ever believe voting with your wallet carries substantial influence. The extent I do feel voting with your wallet can go, the vast majority of the time, it's purely personal. If you personally, individually, believe it's not worth spending your money supporting either the product or company in question, or a specific person slash party for any specific reason, for any of your own values, then that's the only viable, valid instance to take stock in voting with your wallet, in my opinion. I feel that is within your right to make, and you have the choice to either buy or not buy something, however it aligns with your beliefs. But where I call the phrase bullshit is often in scenarios where, most of the time, the phrase is used to preach or evoke some significant change to some degree, and is meant to fight back against the product slash seller. Doing so has often been claimed to send the message to the seller that something's wrong with the product or specific actions done by the seller are wrong in some way, right? And the only considerable instance I've seen this work was towards EA with Star Wars Battlefront 2 to where the outcry against their initial microtransaction and loot box push was so loud, so unhappy, that EA's stock value went down by $3 billion. In that way, voting with your wallet has had some effect, but that was still largely in part because of the initial outcry, the immense criticism and backlash the team got during pre-release beta trials. Forget massive government feedback from Belgium that also affected EA negatively a lot. It was just bad PR and massive backlash that spread all over the place beyond even just online that eventually caused EA to dial back on the loot boxes upon release. Not so much people refusing to buy the game outright. It was a part of it. Obviously people weren't going to buy a game filled with poor designed grindy gotcha stuff when the outcry was that loud and when people were not big fans by any stretch of the imagination, but my point was it was far more than just voting with your wallet slash not buying the game when it came out. Again, if you use the phrase for your own morals, in my opinion, that's the only realistic and valid way you can say slash use voting with your wallet. Otherwise, I find its use and purpose beyond that incredibly limited. Centering it to something simpler and less problematic, say there's a game with questionable design or something. I don't like modern Paper Mario because of the way it's designed. I don't like this one particular level in Crash Bandicoot or Super Mario Sunshine. This Sonic game controls terribly. Any reason at all in regards to any specific design choice, mechanics, controls, anything with a video game for example. Some people will use, vote with your wallet, then to imply the devs or company will get the message of such example stated. No they won't. No, they won't. I feel the idea of not supporting slash buying something, or the opposite, is a simple choice that is easy to make most of the time, but the meaning and intent can be either vague to the seller all on its own, or translate across multiple different reasons in doing so separate from the sole intention or reason originally made. If you don't buy something or something sells less than ideally, that can factor from a number of different things. That thing might have been poorly marketed, there wasn't a lot of shipments to get your hands on. I I mean, look at the PS5. You or others don't have that much money to spare. You choose not to buy it because you may not like the IP. You don't like the design or specific choices made in developing or structuring the game itself. You might not like the company. The company does something terrible that you oppose, etc. 
All these and numerous other reasons don't often get communicated to the companies selling that thing to you solely through voting with your wallet. The seller slash company can also get the message of, huh, I guess people don't like this property slash franchise anymore, or ah, that was a fluke, we'll do it again next time, despite all the numerous reasons I just listed off and others I didn't even mention like poor system sales. And there have been multiple instances of companies noticing either declining sales and or immense critical feedback and straight up not giving a shit and continuing any of the opposed varied actions anyways. Mainly regarding the former, it does extremely little in communicating faults in any sort of quality and design and is vaguer and more cryptic all on its own. And another thing about this, you'll have a good chance of seeing people spread the phrase when talking about a product or a game that's 9.5 times out of 10 a franchise slash game selling mad well anyways, if not being critically received well on top, you could practically equate voting with your wallet to a boycott. You can understand the intent behind it, but ignoring any extreme examples or people taking things to the extreme, you not only need an absurd number of people for either boycott or vote with your wallet to even be marginally effective, you also need to amass that size in such a short amount of time, and that's just really unrealistic at that point. Even if it takes time for either to have some impact, by the time you have some kind of noticeable size, the company and the vast majority of people outside the parties moved on or stopped caring about the thing you're trying to stand for slash against, like the whole National Deck stuff with Pokemon back in 2018, Sword and Shield. There was a very vocal number of players upset Gen 8 started the trend of not bringing back every Pokemon in mainline games. But do I need to remind you guys of Pokemon's most profitable multimedia brand status? Because I'm fairly sure I don't. Gen 8 and now Gen 9 are some of the absolute best-selling Pokemon games in the whole series, despite all that. Paper Mario, a much incredibly smaller series by comparison, whether compared to Pokemon or a third of Mario's subseries, got similar encouragements from some fans as well. Despite Sticker Star, the most disliked game in the franchise for multiple reasons, and recently Origami King, a more favorable Paper Mario in spite of housing similar flaws, are within the upper half of the series' best sold titles. Even as far as specific problems the second half of the series now has, Intelligent Systems is 100% aware of the pushback from Paper Super Mario fans, and the criticism, they straight up choose to ignore it anyways, even when one of the recent entries sold miserably last console. And Battlefront 2 came out, despite the initial pushback on EA's loot boxes and game design, EA straight up defended the practices they were doing before they eventually backtracked. There have been companies that have seen both poor sales and poor reception from various sources and reasons for such, and still sticking to either their practices and design ideas anyways. And for franchises that sell incredibly well anyways, forget about it. You're not making a dent in any way if their bottom line's not effective whatsoever. Even if you don't buy it, not everyone's gonna do the same. And sometimes people will voice VWYW, vote with your wallet, when a company's done consistently scummy, disgusting actions within their own studios. Activision, EA, Ubisoft, etc. doing all kinds of terrible, horrible things to employees and innocent people behind closed doors. Sexual assault and manipulation, lack of monetary compensation, crunch, working overtime, strict inhumane conditions, etc. Some people will also use voting with your wallet to imply doing so will get them to stop their actions or change their ways. And it's 100% right to not want to support a company over something especially like that? Once again though, that never affects most companies' bottom lines, and not buying their most recent product doesn't automatically translate to you're a disgusting, manipulative corporation that needs an immense overhaul, even when it's true. Some companies exposed for such practices to the public can cause an uproar by consumers and the public, but if there are deadlines and are stressing expectations and standards put on these companies bolstered more by the outrage and lack of sales, it can encourage the workplace higher-ups to overwork their employees even more and treat them even worse. Again, voting with your wallet doesn't do anything in either resolving specific quality changes nor workforce and development inequalities and mistreatments. Like, there isn't a correlation when you're not communicating communicating what the actual problem is, and sometimes you'll get swung by hypocrites trying to spread the phrase, and they either end up buying the product anyways, or spread it as a means of shutting out feedback. My nigga, you are a part of the problem. Even if it has limits, practice what you preach, please, if that's you.
And even if it's not, practice what you preach, please. Some of the most often cases of the idea being championed is by people who either buy the thing they said to vote with your wallet on, or who want to take some weird ego-driven moralistic high ground towards others that their best rebuttal is a corny-ass phrase that almost never does anything. Voting with your wallet at its highest potential is solely for your own personal morals and is one of the two choices meant to reflect that, but way too often it's being misused as a practice meant to evoke grand changes that never pan out the way some claim to be. If I'm not supporting Taco Bell anymore, good luck to me trying to amass hundreds of thousands of others to do the same thing for months trying to manage to get the company to shut down or get close, trying to change what they're doing, and or even avoid risking higher-ups from mistreating their employees even further. So what's my takeaway slash alternative to voting with your wallet if I think it's borderline redundant? It's using your voice. There's a reason thousands of YouTubers make videos including me like this plus many others I've made, making critical essays, discussions, arguments, analyses, and such. Same for many people online, on social media, gaming journalists, review sites, etc. When well-structured, reasonable, and logical, it's giving that feedback and criticism and spreading that. One of the constants throughout each you slash case of voting with your wallet as stated throughout the video, both for and against the phrase, is that criticism and backlash have done Done far more than voting with your wallet's ever done. I'm not saying be a dick about it. Don't go shaming people for buying or not buying specific games and products if it is good, bad, well, poor designed, or for other reasons people have that are far better than voting with your wallet. But for any specific change to be made, providing that context and communicating it above all else is literally how you go about making those changes and shifts people want. EA's loot box change happened in large part from horrific PR and large enough backlash. Criticism in simpler cases like game design, mechanics and such have been addressed multiple times across multiple products and such. Call of Duty getting delayed, Movie Sonic's redesign, Sonic Frontiers' extra year of development for quality assurance, Luigi's Mansion 3, Mario Party getting online, the list goes on and on. Yes, there are companies and studios that will just flat out not listen or change, but expressing your voice and stating why XY is bad for XYZ is where you can still communicate where the problem lies. If anything, voting with your wallet's a secondary action slash effect at best. Not only do you have other better reasons to not support slash buy something, whether the product itself or a company, voicing those reasons and spreading that level of criticism and context is far more effective. Again, don't take it to extremes and lynch people skewing one side or another, but if there's a widespread or loud enough pool of criticism, a good chunk of the time corporations will pick up on it and enact on it in some way. And while VWYW is often preached as a short-term solution, actual long-term duration and traits that don't last, using your voice and speaking up does. The more attention and awareness brought to either horrific practices and conditions brought to innocent people or simple quality contentions to the product itself one way or another, the easier it is to cause that level of PR and backlash and the easier it is to send multiple messages of various kinds to these companies than just voting with your wallet because you're actually saying what the problem is. This was something that was in the back of my mind for the last couple days that I felt could have made for a decent video, and some food for thought for those even remotely familiar with the phrase. Let me know your thoughts whether you agree or still feel VWIW has some merit beyond a moralistic compass. Thank you for watching and listening, and now that I'm done with DoorDash, it's time to grind out more discussions and gaming content for you guys. Let's go, dude. Stay super. Yo, hey, man, man. hey, what are ya? Yeah.